Hi folks, welcome to this video on VO2 Max. In this one, we're going to look at the factors affecting VO2 Max, but it's always best to start with definition. So VO2 Max is the maximum volume of oxygen used or utilised by the muscles per minute. The bits people always forget is that one there, saying that it's the maximum and that one there, saying it's per minute. You won't get away with saying per unit of time. So please make sure you put that it's the maximum volume of oxygen used or utilised by the muscles per minute. Some people add at the end of that definition, uh, per minute of exhaustive exercise. Well, yeah, but that's why we're saying maximum. It's not, it's not just a volume of oxygen. You are working to your maximum here. If we are calculating or you are working at your VO2 max. Having a high VO2 max is obviously going to benefit uh, endurance performers such as Mo Farah. He's going to have a very, very high VO2 max. His body is going to be capable of taking on board and using very high levels of maximum intensity of oxygen and using them, uh, it, sorry, his muscles using them. What I would say as well is we sometimes, oh, sorry, it's best to, to talk about um, VO2 max in terms of milliliters per kilogram per minute. The reason is very often or in the past, uh, we looked at VO2 max in terms of litres per minute. How many litres of oxygen you can take on board and use per minute. But the reality is a taller, bigger person will have a higher VO2 max than a smaller person just because of the size of their lungs, not necessarily because they're actually fitter in terms of their aerobic endurance. So what we do is when we've got your VO2 max in terms of litres per minute, we divide it by how many kilograms you weigh so that we get a unit of millilitres per kilogram per minute. So we know how much oxygen in terms of millilitres every kilo of you was using per minute. And that allows us to, uh, you know, to level it out across all different body shapes and body sizes. So the actual factors affecting VO2 max then, we're going to deal with them in about four categories. Number one being physiological. So what can you change in your physiology to increase your VO2 max? Well, remember, VO2 max is the maximum volume of oxygen that can be taken in or utilised uh, or used by the body per minute. So we've got to get oxygen into the body. So how can we do that? Well, we can increase, oops, we can increase, I'll start that again. We can increase our cardiac hypertrophy. Or we can increase the size of our heart, sorry, through cardiac hypertrophy. So if I increase the size and strength of my heart tissue, I can pump out more blood per beat. I can increase my stroke volume. I can pump out more blood per minute. I can increase my cardiac output. So I can deliver more oxygen to the muscles. So I can use more oxygen. So that will increase my VO2 max. I can also increase the amount of haemoglobin. So I can carry more oxygen in the bloodstream. As well as that, I can also increase the number of capillaries I have in my muscles and in my lungs. I can increase my capillary density, also known as capillarization. And as well as that, if I've got high percentages of slow twitch muscle fibres, if you think back to the, you know, the characteristics of slow twitch muscle fibres, they were naturally built for endurance. We've got high levels of myoglobin. Remember, myoglobin is what stores oxygen in the muscles. Hemoglobin stores or holds oxygen in the blood. Myoglobin stores or holds oxygen in the muscles. And mitochondria, they were the power stations of uh, the cells. They produce lots of energy aerobically for endurance athletes. So if I do a training and I increase all of these, all of these are about getting more oxygen into my system and into my muscles. If I do that, I'm going to increase my VO2 max. So next up is age, and this is quite straightforward. Basically, sadly, VO2, VO2 max, sorry, decreases with age and the and it's about one percent a year from the age of 20 onwards so once you get to your 20th birthday unless you stay on top of it in terms of training and fitness which will obviously increase your vo2 max your vo2 max will decline if you don't do anything about it by about one percent per year and various reasons but the main ones lost elasticity of the heart which means less, and ultimately less diffusion of oxygen into the lungs and muscles that should be a full stop in there i do apologize for that well, they're the reasons why. However, you know, if you train, that's reversible. Uh, you will increase the elasticity of your heart. You'll get greater diffusion of oxygen into the muscles via these adaptations. Uh, so it's a case of you want to reverse the effects of aging. You've got to keep doing regular physical activity. Finally, then gender. The general rule is males generally have a higher VO2 max than females. And that's due to the fact that women have slightly high percentage body fat. The more fat you carry, the more it lowers your VO2 max because it means extra work for the body. And the fact that women also have a slightly smaller lung volume due to a slightly smaller rib cage. So both those factors in combination lead to the fact that males generally have a slighter higher VO2 max than females. 
And also we've got training. So doing any form of physiological, sorry, aerobic training will uh, reverse the decline caused by aging. And that's going to, you know, training, going out for long distance runs, swims, bike rides, things like that. That is going to impact on all of these. It's going to create cardiac hypertrophy, going to increase hemoglobin levels. It's going to increase your capillary density and it's going to increase the number of slow twitch fibers. Now, the methods and forms of training need to be accurate. And I've dealt with them in a, in a follow up video. I've done one on how you evaluate VO2 max, but I've also uh, done one on two with training zones, Carvone and things like that. So have a look at that video for that kind of information on the specific types of training to increase VO2 max. Finally then, just worth mentioning this, genetics is also a factor that can affect VO2 max. So for example, physique, lung capacities, certain lifestyle factors, I mean not lifestyle factors in terms of what you choose to do, but um, certain things can be inherited from your parents that can either increase or decrease your VO2 max. I think some studies that have been done that show that like, um, you know, it's not just the fact that Kenyan people are born at high altitude that allows them to become great distance runners. But it's, you know, look at their physiques. They're very tall. They're very lean. And that's something that you will inherit from mum and dad. And if you're tall and lean, you've got very long stride length, which allows you to cover long distances quicker than your rivals because each stride uh, eats up more miles. So it's, it's, that, that could also be a factor. You could inherit a high or low VO2 max. And that is another factor that can ultimately affect your VO2 max. So I hope you found this video useful, folks. Look out for the ones in terms of how you improve it, how you measure it, how you evaluate it uh, for other little lessons on VO2 max.